This BYU devotional address with President Cecil O. Samuelson and Sister Sharon Samuelson was given on January 7, 2014. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the first devotional of the new year. We trust that you've had a wonderful holiday, and we welcome you now back to campus. My name is Sandra Rogers, and I've been asked to conduct this devotional. Today we are pleased that President Cecil O. Samuelson and Sister Sharon Samuelson will speak to us. Sister Samuelson is originally from Salt Lake City, Utah, and following her graduation in history education from the University of Utah, she taught school to help support her husband through his early years of medical school. For most of their married life, she's been a full-time homemaker and the mother of their five children. She's been active in the community and has served in various capacities in all of the auxiliary organizations of the church. She and President Samuelson have 14 grandchildren, and she's a true blue sports enthusiast. President Samuelson is also a Salt Lake City native who served at the University of Utah as professor of medicine, dean of the School of Medicine, and vice president of health sciences. Prior to his call as a full-time general authority, he was the senior vice president of Intermountain Healthcare. He holds bachelor's of science degrees, master's degree in edu educational psychology, and a medical degree from the University of Utah. He then furthered his medical education with postdoctoral work at Duke University. President Samuelson was called to serve as a member of the first quorum of the 70 in 1994. At the time of his assignment as 12th president of Brigham Young University, he was a member of the presidency of the 70. He was granted general authority emeritus status in October of 2011. We look forward to hearing from the Samuelsons this morning. We appreciate the positive influence they have had on BYU as they have served. They are inspired leaders who are totally loyal to those whom we sustain as prophets, seers, and revelators. President and Sister Samuelson love the young adults of the church, and they love BYU. We're blessed to have them leading this university. And now we have the opportunity to hear from President and Sister Samuelson. Good morning. We add our voice of welcome to all of you at the beginning of a new year and a new winter semester. While chilly outside, you exude a warmth that is both pleasant and encouraging. We join you in looking forward to an exciting and productive experience as we push forward to make 2014 one of our best years ever. Two years ago in the devotional that began the 2012 year, we spoke to the theme of things that we appreciate most about BYU. Some may recall that we mentioned our mission and aim statements, our honor code, our opportunities to attend devotionals, and to speak freely about our faith and testimonies. We do not plan to repeat that message today, but have chosen to discuss a similar but different topic, the reason we do some of the things we do at BYU. We intend to focus to reach far beyond the local culture and environment that we on campus experience and enjoy. In the October 1999 General Conference Priesthood Session, President Gordon B. Hinckley, then our prophet and chairman of the BYU Board of Trustees, gave an interesting address concerning some of the things our sponsoring church does and why they are done. At that time, Sharon and I were not at BYU and had absolutely no inkling that I would receive this assignment that has occupied us these last several years. Because he was president of the church and also because I occasionally wondered about some of these things myself, I was particularly interested in the matters he might choose to address in the limited time remaining in that great priesthood gathering. Before speaking to any specific topics, President Hinckley's prefatory comments included the following, quote, Our great mission is to testify of Jesus Christ's living reality. We should not be involved with anything not in harmony with this major objective. We should be involved with whatever is in harmony with this objective." Close quote. He then went on to address this question, why does the church sponsor BYU? We wish our time this morning would allow us to repeat all that he said on that occasion. His impressive message is widely available electronically and in print, and I commend its careful reading and study by all who have an interest in this great institution of BYU specifically and church education generally. 
The prophet began by declaring that the church's support for education has a doctrinal root, and then quoted these important verses from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 88. Teach ye diligently, and my grace shall attend you, that you may be interested more perfect, instructed more perfectly in theory, in principle, in doctrine, in the law of the gospel, in all things that pertain unto the kingdom of God, that are expedient for you to understand, of things both in heaven and in earth and under the earth, things which have been, things which are, things which must shortly come to pass, things which are at home, things which are abroad, the wars and perplexities of the nations, and the judgments which are on the land, and a knowledge of the countries and of kingdoms, that ye may be prepared in all things when I shall send you again to magnify the call whereunto I have called you, and the mission with which I have commissioned you. President Hinckley lamented that because of the great expense related to BYU and other church educational efforts, it is not possible to serve all those who would like and deserve this great learning experience. He said the church will try to make it available to as many as possible through BYU, our other schools, institutes of religions, and seminaries. He mentioned how grateful all who are here should be, and his disappointment with the occasional person who complains or does not seem to appreciate the unique opportunity to be at BYU. President Hinckley then went on to say the following. Moreover, the university has brought much favorable notice to the church. Its sponsoring organization, the church, is widely recognized. It has become known for standards and ideals which have been written about and talked about and which let the world know of those things in which we believe. Its academic programs and athletic programs have both brought honor to the university and the church. And as generations of students move through its halls and on to graduation and then out across the world, they will bring honor to their alma mater and its sponsor, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. President Hinckley made further comments and assurances about BYU and church education generally before moving on to other important topics. But it's very clear how our prophet leaders think about BYU. We feel it appropriate that we should express some pleasure and comfort about this remarkable support and reassurance, but we also hope all at BYU feel the tremendous responsibility this entails for everyone so associated with Brigham Young University. With that heavy but blessed burden in mind, let us now delve into a few of the reasons that we at BYU do some of the things that we do. First, let us mention you, students. After all, it would be a very difficult proposition to make the case for having a university without students. We are aware that at some places and at some times it may seem to those studying that they are viewed as a necessary nuisance rather than a fundamental reason for the establishment of a university. Should that ever be the case, please read and carefully consider those verses from Section 88 that President Hinckley quoted and we have repeated today. For BYU to be the best it can be, the students who study here and represent the university in so many ways must also strive to be the best that they can be. All of you students have been very carefully selected. Your excellence in academic achievement and potential are widely understood and at least as important in our admissions consideration is your fit for BYU, meaning your willingness and capacity to meet and follow the mission and aims of a BYU education. Our honor code, our commitment to service to others, and striving to be spiritually strengthened go hand in hand, all being essential for successful students at BYU. It is this inspired combination of values and attributes which reflect the now widely recognized ability of BYU graduates to serve their families, churches, communities, and nations with such effectiveness and remarkable contributions. You who come here are not perfect nor is the admissions process perfect, nor anyone or anything else at BYU. But hopefully, you and others will understand the breadth of prayerful consideration that goes into our ad admissions decisions, and also the sadness we feel that we cannot accommodate more who would like to come and who could grow and contribute. Second, we work very hard at continually striving to improve the quality of the university in both broad and narrow ways. In many respects, the measure of a great university is found in the caliber and attributes of its faculty. BYU has always been blessed with devoted and committed faculty. Over our history from humble beginnings, we have had a gradual but significant strengthening of our faculty in all of its dimensions. In virtually every discipline in which we are engaged, we now have professors and colleagues who have achieved broad distinction in their endeavors, 
while keeping their primary focus on our tremendous students. Our mentoring efforts and successes, for example, have led the national leadership among universities in placing our graduates in the most outstanding graduate and professional education programs in the United States and abroad. Third, we have the responsibility to become a light unto the world wherever we can. President Hinckley mentioned both our academics and athletics. In each of these areas, and others as well, we have continued to advance, and, have, and, we have t if, and had we time today, we could list for you many successes and much recognition that have continued to bring acclaim to both BYU and our sponsoring church. By now, I am sure that some of you wonder if we think our primary responsibility at BYU is to brag. Let us defend ourselves a little by sharing just a two bits of homespun philosophy from names you may or may not recognize. First, someone said once, if you've done it, it ain't bragging. Second, Ann Landers, the former queen of etiquette in a newspaper column said, bragging is not an attractive trait. But let's be honest, a man who catches a big fish doesn't go home through an alley. We fully, rec fully recognize the potential conflict or confusion between what Jesus said about letting your light so shine and keeping your candle under a bushel. Our purpose today is to be clear about why we do some of the things we do at BYU and the potential impact for good they have not only for the church, but also for the university and others as well. Although there are many examples supporting the premise that what we must share what we do at BYU as well as render service broadly, time allows us only a brief glimpse at a few matters. Most would be aware that we have frequent visits to campus from people of prominence who represent the best of many cultures, professions, and peoples. We invite them because of what they can teach us and help us better understand about the world around us. But we are also anxious to host them on campus because of what it is they may learn and better understand about who and what we are. Our students have the regular privilege of hearing these distinguished visitors and addresses and classroom discussions. We also host conferences that have gained wide acclaim and recognition as well. Just one example would be the Law and Religion Symposium, which is jointly sponsored by the J. Reuben Clark Law School and our supporting church. Here we bring distinguished legal scholars and governmental leaders who share our concerns about the importance of religious liberty throughout the world. As with many of our impressive visitors, a number might find it awkward to respond to an invitation to visit our church leaders alone, but feel it quite natural to come to a renowned university of quality to participate in significant learning, teaching, and sharing. This would not be possible if Brigham Young University did not have a reputation as a fine and serious academic institution. BYU also has a tradition of solid outreach throughout the world. For many years, we have had the opportunity to send volunteer teachers to China, for example, to teach English and increase appreciation for Western thought and cooperation. Our nursing students and faculty, our engineering students and faculty, and several of our outstanding performing groups have increased friendships and cooperation all around the globe. All of these things are expensive, and all are opportunities that bring friendship, gratitude, and recognition to and understanding of BYU and our sponsor sponsoring church. Likewise, we regularly have some remarkable events on campus that have a major impact locally and afar. Currently, the Museum of Arts is hosting the Sacred Gifts exhibit, which displays some of the finest religious artwork of Karl Bloch, Heinrich Hoffmann, and Franz Schwartz. Most of these pieces are on loan to BYU from Denmark, Sweden, and the Riverside Church in New York City. Our friends in Europe have allowed them to come because of the respect and trust enjoyed there by BYU and the Museum of Art. These paintings have never left Denmark before and likely will never again. We hope you will take the opportunity to see these wonderful masterpieces. Over the decade we have been at BYU, both at home and as we have traveled, we have had many personal experiences that emphasize and clarify the point Sharon has just made. My dear, why don't you tell our friends about the remarkable trip we took to Rome, Italy with Noel and Sidney Reynolds and Christian Heal soon after we arrived at BYU in 2003. Thank you. Although we had been to Rome a couple of times before, we were very excited to have a unique experience with these colleagues because we had been invited to the Vatican Library by Catholic leaders to discuss a cooperative venture regarding the preservation and translation of ancient Syriac texts 
that the Vatican Library possesses. We were treated cordially and respectfully as details of our continued cooperation with the library were discussed. Never before had we understood to this degree how important the substantial and serious scholarship going on at BYU is in making friends and having positive influence for the university and the church throughout the world. We are pleased that this special project continues and also several others that could equally be mentioned. <coughs> Even though most of our students might not be fully aware of such activities, they are extremely important and valuable in the broader work and initiatives of Brigham Young University. For many years, the Division of Continuing Education at BYU has blessed thousands of lives by providing courses and instruction increasingly online for those living far from campus. As another example, an increasingly significant part of our educational outreach activities is found in the various venues of BYU Broadcasting. Through the combined efforts of BYU TV, KBYU, BYU Radio, BYU TV International, and our 24-7 internet streaming around the world, we are reaching millions of people. In the United States alone, BYU TV is now in about 50 million households. In 2009, BYU TV was found in only one Nielsen rating measurable market. In 2013, that figure has risen to 46 of the major markets in the USA. Before we say more about what we are doing with BYU Broadcasting, let us return to the words of President Hinckley in the 1999 address we mentioned at the beginning of our remarks today. As he spoke of our sponsoring church, he reminded us that, quote, it is concerned primarily with the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ, close quote. Therefore, all that we ultimately do must be in harmony with that key objective and responsibility. That is why in 2009, our BYU broadcasting efforts adopted the slogan of seeing the good in the world. When you read the words of the Savior in Matthew chapter 5, you will see the roots of that phrasing. Now, how is that to be accomplished? Many of you know that I am an avid BYU sports fan. While we both attend as many sporting events, lectures, musical and dramatic, dramatic presentations as we can, we are extremely grateful that we can follow many of these events on BYU TV when we cannot personally be in attendance. In this, we are not unique. We know of those who have tuned in to one of our television or radio stations to watch or listen to a sporting event and have stayed tuned to other programming because they really do want to see the good in the world. Programs like Granite Flat, Studio C, American Ride, The Story Trek, and others have a large following among our BYU and church communities, but also have attracted many not of our faith because of their wholesome quality. Let's listen to what a few have had to say about their BYU TV experiences. I was chasing the choir, trying to get uh, music in the spoken word. Uh, I wasn't really interested at the time in anything else, but since then, oddly enough, the music in the spoken word broadcast is simply a bonus. Out of all the church-related, quote, programs out there, you know, the televangelist and all this, there's really no program like BYU. I have to say I'm very partial to the BYU music specials, you know, um, and then when you see those, uh, those little 30-minute uh, programs, the, the the scripture programs, and the Book of Mormon studies. Those, uh, those are just they're just wonderful. It's just so honest and so open, you know. But but uh, real, you know. They they tell you the truth without beating it into you, you know. And then you can draw your own conclusions. But uh, it's invaluable. Uh, I, I could not put a price tag on it. It simply is wonderful programming. Wonderful. Robert and Bonnie Kempfer of rural Oregon were freshly retired and eager to start a new chapter in their lives when Bonnie's search for worthwhile media brought the couple to BYU Broadcasting. I was in the back room watching uh, television, just flipping through the channels and came across BYU and was watching it and was really impressed that uh, these fellows could talk for an hour and never look at their notes. And that really impressed me. I even mentioned it to Bob that these were guys that really knew what they were talking about. I found programs like Joseph that was the six, the series of six, and the uh, Road to Zion that has a series of six. And I w it happened to be watching the story of Joseph when uh, Bob couldn't find anything on his television and 
came in to see what I was watching and asked me what I was watching and I told him, Joseph, well, who was Joseph? And I tried to tell him a little bit about it. Well, who was Joseph Smith? He had never heard of Joseph Smith before. And uh, so after trying to tell him a little bit, we sat down and watched the rest of the program. Afterwards, he tells me that he knew immediately that Joseph was a prophet. He knew there had to be somebody out there in the, in the world that was a prophet. And he uh, got real hot and chilled, and he says he just had a confirmation of it immediately that this was right. There's just um, been so many things that have pointed that way, and we've, we've just had blessing upon blessing. It's just... My blessing came from BYU. BYU is what brought the spirit to me. So I'm very thankful for that. People in our ward, they call us the, the BYU kids, because that's how we was, got into the church, was through BYU. You know, one of the fellows, he's the, uh, and the brother, he's the easy, uh, high, high counselor. He said he's the first time he ever heard anybody be con con converted watching television. <laughs> developed a strategy that we have borrowed and refined at BYU TV. While surveys of various kinds have demonstrated that people describe their desire for the increased availability of wholesome and educational television programming, it is clear from viewing patterns that the primary motivation for choosing a particular program or event is to be entertained. Thus you see in our programming that we do seek to have high quality entertainment that is uplifting and clean, but also that tends first to engage and then enlighten the viewers. It is common for people to become aware of our devotionals, general conference, and tabernacle choir broadcasts, scripture roundtables, and other church-sponsored events while simply, at least initially, seeking just to be entertained. Likewise, many good people have been introduced to wonderful, uplifting programming, attractive to people of many faiths, like Fires of Faith, Silent Night, and the upcoming production of Handel's Messiah that will premiere later this year. Let's view just a couple of brief clips from these programs that have gained national acclaim and attention. One more for the new priest. Hello, Pfarrer. Lonely tonight? How could I be lonely with God by my side? <laughs> I didn't know you brought him with you. <laughs> I heard you singing the other day. You have a beautiful voice. You huh? just joined the church choir. Some unusual methods you're using? Yes, but they're working. Working for whom? For the scum of this town? Isn't it our ministry to help them change? Our ministry is to prevent people from becoming what these people already are. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Does Father Nesta know about all this? You didn't like the performance of our choir? Don't you ever let a woman sing in the choir again. I will not let you turn my church into a tavern. You read what you saw. I know everything about you. You of all people, a child out of wedlock conceived and born in sin. This kind of behavior might be fitting for an illegitimate child, but never for a priest of God. Forgive me that I failed you, Paolo. What happened? Did God change his mind? I don't believe Father Nestler will allow you to have he's your right. but He's your superior. God is my superior. When hope is gone, and we are left in darkness, there comes a light. If you want to keep hope alive, you must never lose hope yourself. Love thy neighbor and put all thy faith in God.
This is the word of God in our own language. It has been translated by great men who want you to know what only the clerics have known. Come, take one. It is for you, please. The Lord of heaven and earth bless your majesty with many and happy days that as his heavenly hand hath enriched your highness with many singular and extraordinary graces so you may be the wonder of the world in this latter age for happiness and true felicity to the honor of that great God and the good of his church through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Wir geben hiermit allen bekannt, dass der exkommunizierte Martin Luther im gesamten Heiligen Römischen Reich als Persona non grata zu betrachten ist. Only the truth will make us free. Only the truth from the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light and that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day the translation of the King James Bible is now complete. Are we in agreement? Hopefully this brief account of why we do some of the things we do at BYU will increase both understanding and appreciation for the opportunities and responsibilities we have as members of the Brigham Young University community. We wish we could share many more examples and encourage you to think of those you have observed that have contributed so broadly. BYU is a great institution established by the Lord's prophets to fulfill sacred purposes and has prospered under the hands of heaven. We can never adequately express our appreciation for being associated with BYU and hope you sense the same feeling. We know God lives and Jesus is the Christ. We, like you, feel honored and blessed to have the privilege of being involved in this great work. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This BYU devotional address with President Cecil O. Samuelson and Sister Sharon Samuelson was given on January 7, 2014.